So Booleans are one of those tricky subjects that we have inside of Polygon-based modeling software that can be quite confusing. You see, using Booleans is one of the most powerful and versatile workflows inside of Blender, but also one of the most tricky to get the hang of. So instead of making a tutorial on every single aspect of the Boolean operation, I want to give you a full overview here. So for any newcomers to my channel, my name is Josh and I'm a hard surface modeling artist. Now hard surface modeling is quite special because it's the workflow that uses booleans the most. As a matter of fact, booleans are what I use in 90% of my modeling. Now before we hop into the nitty gritty of booleans, let me first explain what exactly booleans are. Simply put, booleans allow you to cut out areas of your mesh, fuse meshes together, or take the overlapping areas between two meshes. Respectively, these types of booleans are called different booleans, union booleans, and intersection booleans. These names are actually taken from set theory and mathematics because of the operations that are performed between the two objects. But don't worry, you don't need to know any math to understand how booleans actually work. So how exactly do we add a boolean? Well, it's simple. Select your model, add a boolean modifier, choose the type of boolean you want to use, and then select your boolean piece. For example, here's a cube with a cylinder going through it. What I can do is simply select the cube, add a boolean boolean modifier to it and then select the cylinder, but you'll notice that nothing actually happens. That is because you need to hide your boolean object first, also known as a cutter. Usually what I do is I just add them to a separate collection and turn off the collection altogether. You can also press shift plus the number of the collection for your cutter. So for example, if I have a collection and it's the second collection in the stack with my cutters, I can press shift 2 to quickly hide that collection. Now this is the long way of adding booleans, if you're using add-on like hard ops or box cutter or even the built-in bool tool add-on you can actually do the same operation in just a few clicks now i have plenty of tutorials on my channel that cover the hard ops and box cutter workflow these are the main two add-ons that i use personally next we need to talk about exactly what we do after adding in a boolean well you have two options the first option is you can keep the boolean on applied which we call the live state or you can apply it generally i tend to keep my boolean operations unapplied until i absolutely have to to apply them. For example, if I fuse two cylinders together using a union boolean and I want to add a bevel between the two cylinders, I have to apply the boolean. This is because when a boolean is still live or unapplied, we can't access the geometry between the two. The boolean technically doesn't exist until we actually apply the modifier and then we'll have access to the geometry. Now this is the difference between a non-destructive and a destructive workflow. Non-destructive workflows are those in which you don't apply your boolean modifiers and destructive workflows are the workflows where you do apply them. The nice thing about the non-destructive workflow is you have the ability to quickly move things around and adjust things without having to apply all your changes. If you've already applied your boolean it's a lot harder to do this. Now if you've ever used a CAD software before like moi 3 d for example, you'll notice that one of the major downsides is that all the operations are actually baked in. It's a fully destructive workflow and a lot harder to make changes to your model which is why I love Blender. I'm personally a Blender user, I don't use CAD too much, so I won't get too much into the CAD workflow in this video. Next, we need to talk about some of the big problems that Booleans will cause. But before we do that, I would highly suggest picking up our Hard Surface ebook, which goes into a lot more detail about this stuff and this particular situations that you run into. And if you're completely new to Hard Surface Modeling, you can check out our Hard Surface Modeling Jumpstart course over on our website. We'll teach you the full workflow, start to finish, modeling, rendering, composition, and of course, all the tools you need to know inside of Blender to get started. They're both free and I'll link them in the description. So one of the most common issues people run into when using booleans is shading issues. For example, watch what happens when I cut a hole through the cylinder. That shading around the hole looks really bad and this is because of the nature of polygon based modeling software. When you add booleans they cause n-gons which are faces with more than four vertices. Now n-gons aren't really a huge issue but they can become problematic if they're on a curved surface. If you have n-gons on a curved surface, you're going to get shading breaks because Blender is unable to calculate the shading properly on this mesh. This is actually one of the benefits of using CAD software because you can usually run boolean
booleans on these surfaces with zero issues and zero shading problems. Blender calculates models using polygons, whereas CAD software calculates models using mathematical equations. They're basically the same workflow, but the way they calculate the mesh is completely different. But this doesn't mean you have to move over to CAD just to get clean shading. There's actually a few ways to fix them inside a Blender. Generally, you have a few solutions. The first one is you can make the mesh really dense, so that way the n-gons caused by the booleans are really small and not noticeable. Number two, you can use the normal transfer modifier, which transfers the shading from a clean mesh to a nasty mesh. Number three, you could manually retopologize the mesh into quads, but usually this is overkill unless you need quads for your workflow. And number four, you could use quad remesher to fix the mesh, but this add-on is quite expensive, so keep that in mind. Now, since I'm a concept artist, generally what I focus on is just isolating the shading so that way it isn't actually noticeable. When you're doing concept work or just renders, the topology doesn't matter at all, and you just want to get a clean result. Now, it's also worth mentioning that if you're using a boolean on a curved surface, make sure you add extra loops through that boolean. The reason for this is that although the base mesh may be quite dense, when you cut a boolean through it, it might just create one really long and stretched end gone. By adding in loops to your cutter objects, this adds extra geometry, which is then applied to your main object, so the end gons are a lot smaller and more isolated. So instead of having something like this, where the end gons on the curved surface are quite long, you might want to have something like this instead, where the end gons are much smaller and kind of pushed into the bevel. And if you add a bevel modifier and end up getting artifacts, all you really need to do is slide the vertices away from the bevel or simply use the bevel shader. Another thing you could use is the offset cut feature inside a mesh machine, which will actually eat the surrounding geometry and give you enough space to run your bevel. Mesh machine is an amazing add-on and basically brings the CAD workflow to Blender, so if you don't have it, I'd highly recommend picking it up. This is a great option for many Blender users because Blender's free, whereas CAD software can cost $1,000 per year, so $40 versus $1,000 per year. It's a no-brainer. Now, one last thing I'd like to quickly mention are the exact and fast options you'll see inside of the Boolean modifier. Basically, it doesn't matter which one you use, but generally fast is going to have the best performance. The only difference is if you're adding a Boolean where the main object and the Boolean object occupy the same exact points in 3D space. In this case, you'll need to set your Boolean to exact or simply scale the Boolean up a little bit so that way it works. Otherwise, it doesn't matter which setting you choose. So, let's be basically a rundown of how booleans work inside a blender. They're not particularly complicated, you just need to know how to use them. Now let me give you a quick practical example of using all this information together. First, I'm going to add in a cylinder with about 64 segments just to make it nice and round. Next, I'm going to duplicate the cylinder, rotate it, and cut a hole using a difference boolean. As you can see, the shading looks really bad, and the reason for this is because it creates this really long stretch end gone on the curved surface. To fix this issue, Issue, I'll simply add in a loop above the hole, add a loop below the hole, and then add a few loops in between. This will make the geometry much more dense and the end gons will be a lot smaller so the shading looks way better. However, inside the hole we have really nasty shading stretch as well, so make sure you also add some loops to your cutter object so that way the end gons are a lot smaller in the hole as well. And basically those shading errors won't even be noticeable anymore. You could of course manually retopologize or use a normal transfer modifier but these topics are a little bit more advanced and are best suited for a separate video. Like I said, I simply prefer to get good enough shading as opposed to perfect shading. If I'm going for a good render, I just need a good shading, I don't need perfect shading. Now the last thing I'm going to do is add a bevel to this object. So since the bevel begins to overlap with the surrounding geometry, I'll simply clean up any geometry overlapping with the bevel and merge any near miss vertices together. Alternatively, you could use a bevel shader here which is probably a much easier and cleaner solution since it doesn't require a physical bevel. And that is it guys, that's really all you need to know about the boolean workflow inside of Blender. Keep in mind that booleans on flat surfaces are the most ideal situations because in those cases all you need to do is use a way to normal modifier to fix the shading. It only gets tricky once you start using booleans on curved surfaces which is why I wanted to focus on that in this video. Anyways, now that you have a general understanding of booleans and how they work, the next thing you can do is watch some of my other hard surface modeling tutorials on my channel and check out our hard surface jumpstart course so you can put this stuff to use. Both options are of course free and are going to give you tons of knowledge so that way you can expand on your understanding of booleans 
and how to use them. Anyways, I wish you luck on your hard surface modeling journey and remember to practice a lot because practicing is the only way to really understand this stuff. Take care and see you in the next video.